Welcome to the Valve Position Control Workshop. In this workshop, we'll have an opportunity to explore valve position control using the example of flow control using a small and larger valve. The first part of the exercise will uh, change the flow uh, target over a range and observe the performance of the valve position control. And in the second part, we'll actually change the position of the, valve, the target for the valve position. In this uh, workshop, the process we're simulating is one in which a small valve is used to precisely maintain a target flow. A large valve is then used to maintain the uh, valve uh, position of the smaller one to keep it within range. So the valve position controller is adjusting the larger valve to keep the smaller valve within range. Through the coordination of these two loops, we're able to precisely maintain flow over a wide range. In the uh, simulation, we take into account both the small valve and the big valve in determining the uh, flow. The flow is then controlled using a PID control that's adjusting the smaller valve. The output of that PID is then used as the input to our valve position controller, the integral only controller, that is then used uh, to adjust the larger valve. To start our exercise, We'll uh, look and see the uh, uh, PID is already in auto, so we can go ahead and change the initial target to 40% uh, of range, which in this case turns out to be 120. And so as we can see very quickly, the smaller valve uh, takes action to uh, achieve our new target flow. In response to the output changing, uh, the uh, valve position PID, the integral only PID, starts to also gradually adjust the larger valve to keep the smaller valve at the target position. Through the uh, work of these, then, we're able to achieve uh, the target flow and also maintain the smaller valve longer term at its target position. This is better seen by looking at our chart where we change the flow target. We notice a smaller valve takes immediate action to achieve our target. Also the larger valve gradually starts to change to uh, take over or make up for the, the uh, change made by the smaller valve. This allows the smaller valve then to go back to its original target value. Uh, and in this way we can uh, quickly respond with a smaller valve and over a longer period of time uh, take action to keep it within control range using the larger valve. We can uh, now change our uh, target flow to a different value to 50% um, or 150 um, and uh, when we change it, we again see the output immediately change by the smaller valve to achieve the uh, target flow. So the uh, flow very quickly responds to our, our uh, new set point. We can change it one more time to 60% of scale or 180. And in this case, uh, again, we see the uh, smaller valve immediately respond to this to allow us to get quickly to our target value. And gradually, the larger valve starts to move to uh, keep our smaller valve within range and to keep it longer term at a target position. As we made each of our changes, we see the smaller valve take action, and we see the larger valve very gradually uh, move to keep our smaller valve within uh, its control range. So the combination of this, these two valves then allow us to uh, precisely maintain a flow over a very wide range, a uh, wider range than would be achievable by using the small valve by itself. As we see here, <clears throat> the uh, larger valve very gradually moves to allow the smaller valve to achieve, achieve a target value that we have for the valve position controller. Next, we'll actually 
change the target for the valve position controller. Normally you'd like that at about 50% of range. In this case we're going to change that by about 10%. And uh, look at the impact of that then in terms of the way the small valve is regulated and the larger valve. As we can see, having changed that uh, valve position target, this bigger valve starts to move. Uh, this causes an uh, error in our flow, and so our smaller valve uh, also starts to change to correct for that. And as a consequence, our smaller valve goes to the new target position long term. And the larger valve makes up for any change in flow by gradually changing. So through this combination, we're able to achieve our, our target flow and also to be able to achieve a uh, position for a smaller valve that allows it the freedom to take uh, changes both increase and decrease in a very fast manner. We hope that uh, this exercise has been helpful to you in understanding valve position control and hope you'll use this exercise to further explore this control